Welcome to Design Fusion's Solid Edge blog. In this blog, we'll cover part three of the Solid Edge University's 2023 Baker's Dozen of Solid Edge Tips and Tricks. These tips and tricks are inspired by questions from our tech line and questions received from training. Users do not require Solid Edge 2023 to use these tips and tricks. Continuing from part two, this is tips and tricks number nine, displaying reference elements for assembly relationships. Reference elements such as a parts reference planes can be used to position geometry in an assembly. This is extremely useful in parts where orthogonal faces do not exist. Users can turn on reference elements using the construction display option in the assembly command. Let's have a quick look at how this works in Solid Edge. In this example, I'm tasked to place an O-ring on the stem and center it in this little cutout area here. I'll need to do some prep work first, and I'm going to create a parallel plane off of the end of this stem and center it at the center of that groove. Now I've already measured what the distance is, so I'm just going to enter in the value and position it on the correct side of that plane, and now I have this assembly plane at the center of that groove. Now I can locate that O-ring in my part library, and I'll drag and drop it onto my display screen. Before I position the part, I go to the construction display option on the assembly vertical command bar. From the flyout, I select reference planes to display the O-ring part reference planes. Now using flash fit, I can align the part reference plane with the assembly reference plane. And then I'll use flash fit again to align the axes of the two components. I'll hide the reference plane assembly. And then I'll show you that the O-ring is now perfectly positioned on the stem. Tips and tricks number 10, labeling an assembly. A new label option was added to the decal command in Solid Edge 2022. The decal command was also enhanced in Solid Edge 2022 and now works on assemblies as well as parts. The supported image types for the label are shown on the slide and in the following demonstration, I'll show you how to use this new label option to place a label on an assembly. I'll use this small tank assembly to demonstrate the label capability. The decal command is found on the View tab. Users have a choice of a planar projection or the newer label option. I'll select the label option and click OK. You're then prompted to select the image for your label. I have a warning signage.png that I'll select and use. Once I select the image, I'm prompted to select the face where I want to place this. As soon as I select the face, the image is placed on that face. I'm then presented with a couple of offset fields that I can use to position that label on that face. Simply by entering in an offset value, I can reposition the label. When I'm happy with the positioning, I simply hit finish and I can place another label or hit cancel. The new label only places it on one side, unlike the old projection method, which would project it in both directions, and you often ended up with two labels. A decals header is created on the pathfinder in the assembly, and you can edit back into the decal, where you can reposition it, or you can even change the size and orientation of the label. Just remember to use the new label option you need to have at least Solid Edge 2022. Tips and tricks number 11, drawing sheet comparison. The drawing sheet compare command is found under the file menu or under the application menu in older versions. The drawing sheet compare command only compares pixel changes in each drawing. 
and it only supports the DFT draft file from Solid Edge. Let's have a quick look at how easy it is to use this command in Solid Edge. You launch the Drawing Sheet Compare command. From the File menu, go to Tools and Compare Drawings. When the dialog is launched, you'll notice first of all you can resize this to fit your screen. On the left side of the dialog is where you'll find your input area and options. Under File 1, you'll browse to locate the first draft file that you wish to use in the comparison. Under File 2, you'll browse to locate the second draft file that you wish to use in the comparison. There are a few additional options you can set for the comparison. For example, if there's multiple draft sheets in the file, you can specify which draft sheet you wish to compare. You can control the smoothness of the comparison and change the colors for the comparison. Once the brief setup is complete, simply click Compare. The routine then does a pixel comparison and provides you with four views. The first view shows the differences, second is information, the third and fourth are copies of the images of the two draft sheets. In this example, you can see that in the first draft sheet, the ISO view was not shaded, but it was shaded in the second. And all the other differences focus around the holes, so we can determine that the holes are different in size. This is just a visual comparison, but it can still be quite useful. And you can isolate the sheets to get a closer look at each sheet if necessary. Users can also save this if they wish to keep a record of it. Tips and tricks number 12, reorient initial views in draft. Drawing views can be modified after view placement without having to delete and replace the views. Users just have to select the place drawing view that they wish to change, and then they can use the various layout or orientation commands on the command bar. Let's have a look at how this works in Solid Edge. In this example, I've already created my drawing views. However, in the process, I realized that this view, I want to be the front view. So I select on this view, I go up to my vertical command bar, and I select front view under the view orientation option. A warning message appears stating that the orientation of the aligned views will change to, do you want to continue? Click yes, and you'll notice that the orientation of the selected view and the align views have changed. It's a simple tip, but saves you from having to delete and replace views. Since this is a baker's dozen of tips and tricks, we have tips and tricks number 13, face and part priority mode. In the part two presentation, we looked at some of the assembly selection options. For users who are using synchronous parts in an assembly, you have these two additional selection tools, face priority and part priority. Face priority allows you to select one or more faces for edit at the assembly level. Parts must be active for face selection. Let's have a look at how using face priority can accelerate your design process by up to 100 times. Before I start this demo, I'm just going to go into my Solid Edge options and ensure that under my helpers tab, I'm set to open up any part or sheet metal in synchronous. I then return to the open page where I browse for the desired CAD file. This CAD file happens to be a Pro Engineer assembly, so I'm going to look for Pro Engineer assembly files. I'll select the desired file and click open. This customer does work in metric, so I'm using my isometric assembly template. Now, full disclosure here, this is a customer part. However, I do have permission to use this for marketing and demo purposes. So we'll let this translate. 
This is a real-time translation of this assembly. I have not sped the video up to make it go faster. And once this assembly opens up, I'll fit the screen and you'll see that we have the frame of a love seat here. Now the customer asked me to demonstrate the quickest way to turn this love seat frame into a full couch frame. I noticed that all these components were fixed, so I opened up my assembly relationship manager and I realized that they were all grounded. I first thought that this was due to the translation, but the customer informed me that they ground all their parts once they're fully positioned, and this is their preference. So I selected all the grounds and I deleted them inside the assembly relationship manager. The customer provided me with the dimensions that he wanted the various components moved. So I set up a view as you see here. I then select the face priority command found under the select tool. This allows me to select faces of synchronous parts at the assembly level. I first select all the faces of this side of the frame and turn off symmetry and live rules. Using the steering wheel, I move those faces over the distance provided to me by the customer. And notice that I've actually modified some of these parts at the assembly level. I then return to the flyout menu under the select tool and go back to the default part priority and select this frame section. I toggle on the copy option and use the steering wheel to copy this section over the distance provided by the customer. One of the designers then asked me how to ground all the components again. So I showed him all I had to do was select the ground command and window select the components. And as proof, I opened up the assembly relationship manager and showed him that everything had been grounded. Another designer who was watching this stated that I did this a hundred times quicker in Solid Edge than he could do it in Pro Engineer. This brings us to the end of this blog. If you want to learn more, check out our online training webpage at the link shown on this slide.